So this is the big question. How can you train when ammo is scarce? How can you train when there is a massive influx in new gun owners and there's way more demand than there is supply for ammo? And the ammo obviously goes up in price because that's generally what happens when there's more demand than there is supply. How can you still become proficient at shooting or at least maintain your skill? Well, the answer is, and always will be, dry fire. Just simply taking my pistol at home while it is empty and then simply working reps of so side alignment, trigger press, reloads, draw, movement, and a bunch of other things. Now, there's some misconceptions out there about dry fire, the biggest one being dry fire will destroy your weapon, so don't do it. And there's some people, some uh, certified instructors out there who like to say this. The reality is modern firearms can be dry fired without damaging the weapon. Now, there's a few nuances here and there regarding 1911s, 2011s, and rimfire weapons such as 22s, where they have an angled firing pin, which can create some issues as you dry fire. But if you have a modern service weapon such as a Glock, an m and a CZ, or something else just like that, or even an HK, uh, you're good to go. You can dry fire, and same with centerfire AR-15 style rifles. So what I wanna do is explain some of the different drills and some of the different fundamentals you can be focusing at home. And maybe some stuff you guys actually haven't heard about dry fire in the past, because I've been dry firing now for years. And there's a few things that I've learned as I've gone that have actually created bad habits, and then what I've done to actually correct some of that. And one thing I want to explain real fast before we get into it is, there's a big difference when I'm running classes and I'm working with people and I'm just shooting with lots of different folks, whether they're military guys, law enforcement, um, other citizens just like me, I can always tell a difference in the people that are dry firing and the people that aren't. The people that dry fire are generally just more confident in their weapon, weapon handling. They're more confident in dropping the magazine, racking the slide, just manipulating the pistol, having a consistent grip, you know, drawing more effectively, uh, compared to the people who just never pick up their gun. Even something as simple as taking your handgun, if you're a newer gun owner, and literally just taking your magazine while you're watching TV and just working on dropping the magazine, inserting the magazine, pulling the slide, locking the slide to the rear. Even stuff like that, which is classified as playing with your gun, will actually make you more confident when it comes down to weapon handling, where you can really understand what's going on with the firearm. It's something that I highly recommend new gun owners do. So with that said, let's get into some things about dry fire. So there's obviously a lot of technology when it comes to dry fire. You've got snap caps, you've got dry fire mags, you've got cool CO2 pistol things, laser pistols, uh, laser bullets, I wanna say, that go in the gun that shoot a laser every time we pull the trigger. Uh, the reality is all those things can definitely enable different kinds of benefits uh, to your dry fire, but the reality is you don't actually need those. You can still dry fire a pistol just fine in its current form, once it's unloaded, just working trigger management and then side alignment. Obviously, you're not gonna be getting any crazy reset or recoil, and you're simply not gonna get good recoil even with like an airsoft gun, although it can help a little bit when it comes to watching your sights rise and fall, but not much. Uh, so don't think you have to have all the really fancy Gucci dry fire accessories when it comes to dry fire. Um, if anything, snap caps can be really good for uh, practicing your reloads where you're actually racking the slide and the slide isn't locking back, but also malfunctions as well. So basically what a snap cap allows you to do is put it in the magazine. If I, for example, practice a, let's verify it's empty. If I practice a table reload for whatever reason, or I'm just loading the pistol, I can insert that magazine, rack the slide, and the slide isn't going to lock to the rear because it actually has a fake bullet that it can actually uh, cycle with. So snap caps can be really good, uh, but don't think you need all the crazy wazoo stuff out there to actually get some dry fire in. Now targets, let's talk targets real quick. So if you're dry firing and you're actually aiming at things and you're pressing the trigger, a lot of people do like light switches, um, power outlets, things like that. What I actually like to do is use tape and just give myself a little square or maybe a larger little area that I'm actually going to be shooting into so I can actually work on some of my acceptable sight pictures, some of my throttle control. If I'm obviously shooting a target like this full USPSA in my home, uh, dry firing on it, and I'm you know seven feet away, uh, that's, that's pretty large. I'm not really gonna be able to pay attention or refine my sight picture. Uh, so using something like that isn't going to be very good for my actual training, which is why Ben Steger actually made a bunch of little mini USPSA targets a while back that you can actually buy on his site. But what I like to do is be really simple. I love tape, some of you guys know. Uh, just take some tape, rip off a little 
one inch ish piece. And what this is going to give me is at five yards, seven yards, uh, my front sight is going to cover this up. So it's really going to force me to refine a good sight picture and have a good sight picture uh, before I take that shot and get that dry fire press. Or I can make something bigger like the one over there. So the other thing is your shot timer. Because obviously I'm a big fan of shot timers because it gives you a metric of speed because obviously shooting is about speed and accuracy. That's literally all shooting is about. Um, with dry fire, we're not able to get accuracy. That's one area where you're actually gonna have to go to the range and actually check your marksmanship. Uh, but having a shot timer allows you to see kind of where you're at as far as speed goes. Uh, little tip, if you're inside a confined space, such as me in this armory, uh, something I like to do is actually cover up uh, the speaker where all the noise comes from. Once again, using my tape. This is a super tactical pro tip, I might add. Uh, but just take some tape, cover that up so it's a little less loud, so I'm gonna blow out your ears or potentially your neighbors in the apartment next door. I know, just a little tip, but it makes a big difference when you're doing this a lot. Something just like that, you can set your par times uh, with this pack timer, uh, it's pretty simple. We have instructions on our site on how to do that. And some of the other timers, you can set a par time as well. So if I'm doing my draw and I'm like, you know what, I wanna see where I'm at with a one second draw. I can set one second, put that on my pocket, put it on delay, wait, draw, and I can actually see where I'm at with my time or with reloads or with a target transition. But we'll get into more of that later. So the first thing we're gonna do when it comes to actually dry firing, is we are going to empty the pistol that we are carrying because I'm going to assume that you guys are carrying a handgun on you all day, every day, seven days a week. Well, at least I hope so. So when I load our gun, obviously we've got all of our bullets right here. So I had 14 in one, not uh, full. I'm gonna take that ammo and I'm gonna put it somewhere. A lot of people say in the room next door, um, you can do that for the sake of this video right now. I'm just gonna shove that over there. And then I have all my empty magazines right here that I can use, at which point I will take my 15 round empty magazine, insert into the pistol, verifying it is indeed empty, holster that, my extended 17 round mag, just like the one I just pulled out, put that into my mag carrier, I have no other ammo, and now I'm ready to dry, dry fire. Obviously I wanna make some checks as to what's going on if I do have some ammo in the room and just have some common sense is really what this comes down to and not just arbitrary rules. So that's something to remember, just think about where you put things, think about where you're at, try to pay attention, maybe drink an energy drink while you do this, and don't do anything stupid. So when a lot of people hear dry fire, they generally think drawing the pistol, reloading, and your trigger press. And they don't really think beyond that. When the reality is you can do almost everything with dry fire, with the exception of working on your recoil management because you need live fire for that and obviously checking your accuracy. So there's a couple things that I wanna focus on. So the first one, obviously, I'm gonna use a normal stock Glock because that's more or less what people have, not necessarily that kitted out weapon that's you know filled all five slots. Uh, but I have my standard iron sights here, got nothing going on. And what I actually like to work on is first thing is focus on how's my grip doing? This is probably the most important thing for people, newer shooters to focus on. Really make sure they have that consistent grip every time they pick up the pistol. And it literally could look something like this. They know what their grip looks like, which is basically I take my right hand, I fill the tang of the pistol right here, the beaver tail, wrap my fingers around just like this. My left hand comes up with my thumbs riding forward and I dig these fingers, my support hand fingers into the grooves of my right hand with my thumbs running forwards. So I know that's the good grip. That's the perfect grip. That's what I want 99.99% of the time when I draw my pistol or when I pick my pistol up. I put my pistol down. I pick it up, go to my grip. I put it down. So I'm resetting, having no grip, and then going full grip. So I don't even need a holster to practice this and start building consistency in this area. It's literally as simple as pick the gun up, good grip. Pick the gun up, good grip. And for newer shooters, uh, beginner shooters, new gun owners, that's something you can do is literally just reset from having no grip and then building the grip. Same thing with sight alignment. So I have my sights. You guys obviously know how sights work. If you don't, you can Google it. I'm not gonna go over that. I've got my target on the mall, my little piece of tape. Starting from here, I'm not even drawing from the holster. All I'm doing is punching the gun out, finding my sights. As Soon as I have a good sight picture, bring the gun back. So I'm resetting, I have no sights, nothing. I have my good grip, making sure I still have a good grip. Drive the gun out. Drive the gun out. I'll do this without uh, being on the trigger actually. Drive the gun out. I'll do this a hundred times, thousand times. Because what I want is every time I present the pistol, I am having to finesse my sights that much, very little. There's no gross, you know, my sight is you know, way off to the left and I've got to fully readjust or I'm pulling down too much and I got to bring the gun up. What I want is when I drive the gun out to this target over here, I am only having to finesse my sight picture 
a tiny amount before I can actually take that shot. Then the next thing to work on, so we're not even getting to the holster yet, is I'm gonna work on getting on the wall of my trigger. So this is where dry fire, I'm checking the gun once again. Uh, I like to do that, I check the gun all the time. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be punching the gun out, finding my sights, and also taking up the slack on my trigger because I wanna take all my shots from the wall of the trigger where you actually have all the weight where you're actually going to be pressing and taking that shot. So what I wanna do is I'm simply going to from compressed ready, just like I was doing, I have that good grip. I'm gonna drive the gun out, find my sights, and I'm on the wall. Drive out, find the sights on the wall. Good grip, good sights, good wall. Good grip, good sights, good wall. That's my analysis that I'm focusing on. These three things, and not even pressing trigger. Good grip, good sights, good wall. And this, I'm not even dry firing. I'm not even shooting the gun, but I'm working a lot of really important fundamentals. Now, as far as grip, and this is where you can actually start to build some bad habits. Uh, because we're not shooting with recoil, uh, what a lot of people do, and I've had this problem in the past, is I will actually be lax with my left hand and be a little bit loosey-goosey, um, which is fine for obviously dry fire because there's nothing happening or even, you know, same thing with airsoft. Uh, but as soon as I go to firing, you know, rounds, then I realize, ooh, my grip is bad. So I really want to make sure part of the grip process of, you know, building that grip like I was talking about is making sure I'm nice and tight as if I were live firing and shooting. So I'm really making sure my grip is still tight, my sights are good, and I'm on the wall. Now, as soon as I go to pressing the trigger, so this is where everyone's like, ah, now this is actually dry fire, even though everything else is dry fire and the trigger pressing is just trigger pressing. Again, I'm going to be pressing from the wall. And what I want to do when I take that shot, what a lot of people do, uh, their problem with dry fire is they pin the trigger to the rear. And obviously the gun's not going to cycle because I'm dry firing, but they start basically building a neurological pathway to get all fancy with my verbiage of keeping my finger to the rear after I'm done firing. And then usually what they do is they rack the slide and they go, ah, the reset click that I wanna hear. But the reality is we actually don't want that when we're live firing. We wanna be able to reset the gun and recoil and I'm back on the wall. So as soon as I fire, bang, slide reciprocates, I take my finger off, uh, trigger comes forward, I take up the slack and I'm back on the wall right when the slide comes back into battery. Now, we can't really practice that with dry fire very well because the gun's not cycling and I'm also not really getting reset. So what I like to do when I dry fire is I'm on the wall, I'm looking at my target, and when I go to take my shot, I'm actually going to release tension on the trigger and try to bring my finger forward. So I want to start getting used to not pinning my tr and trigger to the rear, but actually punching my finger forward right when I take that shot. So it's bang, finger comes off. Bang, finger comes off. Bang, finger comes off every time I do this. And it's something that I didn't do initially when I started dry firing, and it's how I built a habit of shooting from reset, pinning the trigger to the rear, which creates all sorts of accuracy problems, uh, discipline issues, and then also uh, short stroking the trigger, um, which is also called trigger freeze, uh, which happens as well. So what we wanna do is when we take our shot from the wall, I quickly get my finger off, and I'm starting to train my brain and train myself to actually be able to get off and not sit on the wall just like this. Now. Let's get into drawing. So actually, first we're going to triple, quadruple check the gun. So yes, it is empty, empty magazine, empty spare. So I'm good to go. So now that we're talking about draw, obviously all I'm adding in is one variable because I'm still going to be building my grip like we talked about, presenting the gun, finding my sights, and then going to the wall. And then maybe firing if I decide to, or maybe I'm just drawing and going to the wall. I'm not actually going to get that uh, press uh, you know, rep. I actually wanna make sure I'm on the wall. So drawing really simple is probably one of the best things. One of the best things that you can do is dry fire is just work through the motions of being aware of your equipment, uh, knowing what's going on. You don't wanna get to the range and never have drawn a pistol. Definitely do it at home with an empty gun and get used to it. Maybe you need to change your holster. Maybe you need to change some of your wardrobe because of what's going on. Um, maybe you need to change your weapon potentially based on some factors. So for me, carrying appendix with a sidecar holster is what I have right here. Just to show you guys what I've got. And I do wear this all day, every day, seven days a week. Uh, sometimes with the next 300, sometimes with this. Whether it's summer or winter, I have the same setup because that was my goal from the beginning because I didn't want to change guns constantly like most people, I guess, do or some people do or the expectation is. I don't want to have to change to a single stack gun for summer or a big gun for winter. Like, no, I just want the same gun all year round. So be that as it may, when I draw, again, I'm not even running a timer yet. Simply just getting the shirt out of the way, grabbing the pistol, presenting. I have that good grip, I have that good side alignment, and I have that good wall slack take up prep, good to go. So I'm not even pressing the trigger yet, but I am dry firing because I'm working through all these necessary reps that are required to actually firing the gun. So shirt, gun, out, and I'm on the wall. I'm not gonna cover 
how to draw in this, in this video uh, because we will do that in another one. But I'll sometimes just do this, different speeds, Check my grip, is my grip good? It's not as good on the left side as it could be. I am on the wall, I do have a good side alignment, and I'm not even pressing. Good, yep, everything's good. Still not even firing around, but I'm getting all the reps necessary that I need. I'm not using a timer yet. And then we're good. So that's adding in a new rep, where I've got draw, grip, side alignment, on the wall, press. So I can start adding all these tasks together, and then I can add a timer, so that adds a whole new variable. Now I'm up to like six variables. As I start dry firing, I can add in a transition. Now I'm adding even more. I could add some movement in my house, or in this case, the armory. And I can just start adding in more things. But what I like to do is I like to start from the bottom, which is just grip or just side alignment, just being on the wall, just being on the wall, a press, and then I'm good to go. And then later, I can obviously work in uh, my reloads. So what I, what I like to encourage people to do, if you're a newer gun owner, something you can do that's super simple is if you don't have mag carriers, uh, just reload off of a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this super awesome Glock 34. This is one of my uh, main guns. And I'm just going to do this. I'm on a table. The reason I like to use a table is the reset is super easy. I'm not dropping my mag all the way to the floor and having to go down and pick it up. And all I'm going to do is I have my magazine here on the table. Got my little target right there. I'll shoot this one right here. It's a tiny little target. I present the gun, good grip, good wall. I find my side again, I have my good grip. And in this case, the gun's not re, uh, resetting. And that actually fell off the table. This is all the rep is. Driving the gun out, I'm on the wall. Take the shot, reload, and I'm set. Now obviously I'm doing a non-slide locked reload. If I wanna practice the slide locked reload, what I can do instead, take a snap cap, Insert that into the magazine, pull that. I can either, I'll do a, a tap rack. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do this. I could start with the gun already slide locked, uh, take up all the slack, see that I'm mushy, drop the magazine, insert, hit the slide release, come back out, press. Or I can actually kind of fake a malfunction, wrong magazine once again, where I'm actually gonna get a click with nothing, tap rack, see that I'm then empty and then reload. So starting from here, no holster, or I can add a holster. Good grip, drive the gun out, find the wall, press, tap, rack. See that I'm empty? Take the shot. So I can do this a gazillion billion times just to build some you know, understanding of reloading the gun, like where the mag release is, you know, how much uh, finesse I'm gonna have to do with the magazine to put it into the mag well. So for new gun owners, this is great. Just give yourself two magazines, and literally just do this. Good grip. I'm on the wall, I take a shot. Drop the magazine, insert the new magazine. Maybe rack the slide. This is where having a snap cap could come in handy. So what it could be is something as simple as pick the gun off the table, take my magazine, insert, rack the slide, and I'm good to go. And that's where snap caps can be really effective because now I can actually cycle the gun. I'm not always being forced at slide lock, you know, obviously uh, racking the slide on an empty magazine, but I can actually work some reload reps, just get accustomed to this. And then when I'm ready, I can reload from my actual holster or from my belt, and I can actually start building in consistency with that. So reloads are a big thing. You'll see people working with dry fire because there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but for most people, what's more important, I would say, is just working side alignment, transitions, good grip, on the wall, good trigger press, getting your finger off the trigger, not pinning to the rear, and then adding in movement. And there's just a lot of different stuff you could start doing from home. And it's not just stand in one spot, just doing this constantly or just pressing the trigger or resetting the trigger. You could start taking apart, you know, individualized tasks and focusing on those, you know, and then adding them together and then adding in movement and just getting creative, getting wild. So dry firing rifle is obviously more or less the same with a handgun. There's a few things that we're taking into account and there's obviously pressing the trigger, which a lot of people obviously think is what dry fire is, but there's everything else. There's moving the gun, getting side alignment, doing my reloads, working my equipment and being consistent at placing the stock and just having proper fundamentals on the gun itself. So 
So I've got this little uh, 10.3, it's empty, empty magazine, same thing, keeping ammo at least somewhat away from the weapon. And it's basically the same thing. I can start with the weapon at you know high ready, low ready, wherever, on a table, and it's simply as simple as I have my piece of tape, grab the weapon, have good stock placement, find my sight picture, uh, hit the safety, and I'm on the wall, the trigger, or I actually take the shot. So I could start with the gun on a table or, or leaning up against a wall, if that's maybe where it is next to my bed. Grabbing the gun, bring it up, safe off, side alignment, good to go. I just do this 100 times. Picking it up, safety off, side alignment, and I'm good to go. Obviously I'm using the ACOG on here, but that's, it's the same fundamentals across the board for a lot of different guns. Then we can start getting into uh, simply working like a target transition. I got my little, paste, little piece of tape there. I got my piece of tape here. I'll actually run the irons through the carry handle. So I get my side alignment, immediately transition, get my next side alignment without pressing the trigger. Side alignment, side alignment. And I just do that 100 times because ultimately I'm only shooting as fast as I can see my sights. So I want to practice seeing my sights sooner and faster. And I do that by building consistency, simply bringing the gun up, safe off, sights. Safe off sights, safe off sights. And I just do that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, then once you have those building blocks, those fundamentals, that's when you can start going to the range. You can actually start doing some really cool stuff. So dry firing a rifle is actually super simple, super easy, in some ways a lot more simple than dry firing a handgun. And it all kind of carries over, especially when it comes down to just like moving, where it's, I got this target, gun up, punch it out, get my side alignment, move to the next position, punch out, side alignment, and I'm done. Whether it's a handgun or a rifle, it's more or less the exact same stuff. So in closing, it's important to understand that what you're willing to put in is what you're going to get out. So if you want to be a high quality shooter, you got to put in the time. There's no shortcuts to success. There's no like, oh, I want to be, you know, a super hot shot shooter, but I don't want to dry fire because that's lame. You know, I want to be a good pianist, but I don't want to do scales. Uh, no, you're going to have to put in some time. You're going to have to dry fire, you know, 15, 30 minutes a day based on how good you want to get. Uh, then if you have some ammo, you have some money, ammo comes back, then also live firing as well. But even if the ammo, you know, remains scarce or it's expensive, maybe you can't afford it, there's nothing stopping you from dry firing an hour a day, two hours a day, 30 minutes a day, while you watch TV, while you watch a movie. People that are like, eh, I don't have time to dry fire, I'm like, well, do you watch a movie? Because while you're watching a movie, there's no reason you can't be dry firing. In fact, one thing I like to do, if I'm watching something, I don't watch a lot of stuff, I'll have my pistol out and literally when a character comes onto the screen, I drive the gun to that character and then I reset and I wait, you know, the camera cuts to another character and when it comes back to that one, I drive the gun back out. Just stuff like that. It builds firearms competency. It just allows you to get your reps in that you need to be doing. Uh, but I see a lot of people making excuses for not being able to shoot. Uh, and a good example is Liku, who we did a video with earlier titles. Uh, will Airsoft Translate to uh, Firearms Handling? Something like that was the title. Um, he's a perfect example. All he had was Airsoft and he's still an extremely high quality shooter. The only things he hasn't been able to work is recoil management and then overall marksmanship, but within a few hours was really pretty good to go. Definitely work on your dry firing, uh, put some time in, get a shot timer. You don't necessarily need, like I talked about, all the fancy little gadgets and gizmos for dry firing. You can just take your you know, standard pistol and then you can take your empty magazines, take your kit or just from a table and you can start getting those reps in. Build consistency, build good fundamentals, and then when you get to the range, you're gonna crush it. I wanna drive fire this.